Seven point lead, 48.3 remaining. Pierce looking for an opening. Pierce on the drive, gets inside and banks it in and a foul. Paul Pierce with a chance for the traditional three point play. Phil Jackson can't believe it. Lakers switching a lot of these screens. Ends up where Pierce is being guarded by Gasol. Odom switches out. And that's a good call and a good finish by Pierce. All right, now Pierce hits this. It would make it a four-point game. Celtics do not have to foul yet with 40 seconds remaining, and they still have two timeouts, two 20-second timeouts. A lot of time still left in this ball game. You want to extend your defense. Ball knocked out of bounds. That it's Laker ball, but they're going to review it again. And how critical has this replay rule been? It actually looked like a run off Lamar Odom, and Rondo does a great job of getting into the paint area trying to get the offensive rebound. Yeah, but he fouls him. See, the problem is here, it's clearly off Odom, but Rondo clearly fouled him to knock it off Odom. But, and that's not reviewable. Right. The foul isn't. Charlie so Fisher's going to check it. Why not? It's the rule. It's an NBA Finals game. Even though it obviously extends the game, the rule's there. They've got to look at it. But you're right, Jeff. That's a hard thing. You're not going to call a foul on Rondo, but Odom touched it last. Rondo so good on the boards. Now, obviously, he fouls here, but he's just such a pest. So for the third time in these last two minutes, they use the instant replay for an out of bounds. And the additional benefit is the Celtics get a free timeout to diagram what they're going to run. And I think the other thing also, if, if you call the foul on Rondo, then Lamar Odom's going to the foul line to shoot two free throws. So that's been stripped away also. All right, so now 39 seconds remain. Both teams are now in the penalty. So any foul, we go to the free throw line except for the offensive foul. Celtics will take it out of bounds. Rasheed Wallace is in the game with Rondo, Pierce, Allen, and Garnett. If I'm Derek Fisher, I don't care how many shots Ray Allen has missed all night. I don't want to give him any open look. If I'm the Celtics, I'm thinking two for one. I'm thinking about going quick right here. Rondo looking for Allen. Allen trying to find room on the drive. Gets inside. Offensive foul. Garnett on a moving screen. And the Lakers get the ball. And Ray Allen had a dead layup and still couldn't put it in, even though it wouldn't have counted. And this is the correct call. Clearly a shove by Kevin Garnett. An unnecessary one because Ray Allen had already turned the corner. And Garnett picks up his fourth because it's an offensive foul. You don't shoot. Now do they have to foul here, Jeff? I think absolutely. Vujicic in the game. And I would have fouled Vujicic on the catch. He hasn't played. And there's the foul. Vujicic just coming in. He played 11 seconds so far tonight before coming in here now. So Sasha Vujicic was a big part of the team in 2008 when they lost to the Celtics. Not playing that much in these playoffs. These are his first free throws of this series. In fact, his first free throws of the playoffs. Mike, but if you're a great free throw shooter, you're a great free throw shooter. I saw Jeff Van Gundy with a suit and tie on, <laughs> knock down free throw after free throw. 85% during the season, but he only took 33 free throws all season. But pressure right there. Vujicic, cold, goes to the line, knocks down two, and it's a seven-point game. Doc Rivers calls another timeout. Celtics certainly had their opportunities, but couldn't convert on some key possessions. Just the opposite. Well, game two, and the Lakers on the verge of regaining the home court advantage. Now, the series will continue Thursday night and then Sunday, both those games, four and five, right back here at the TD Garden, 9 o'clock Eastern on Thursday, an hour earlier Sunday. And that would head back to the Staples Center if necessary, but again, the Lakers showing resiliency. They were disappointed. Phil Jackson upset after the loss. They bounced back and withstood every rally here tonight, Mark. And you got to point the finger at Derek Fisher. When it mattered most, this guy stepped up and made plays. Tough shots, 
but made tough shots, giving the Lakers some breathing room. And Derek Fisher just so huge. 11 of his 16 here in the fourth quarter. Once again, a clutch performer at the most important time of the year. They go alley oop to Garnett, has to come down, and then throws it away. And the Lakers are going to regain home court advantage. They come to Boston and beat the Celtics here in game three. A terrific victory for L.A. They led almost the entire game. And which stood a furious rally by the Celtics. The place was going crazy here in the fourth quarter. But Derek Fisher and the Lakers hold off the Celtics. Think about it. Kobe Bryant, 10 for 29. Pau Gasol, 5 for 11. Ron Artest, 1 for 4. Bynum, 3 for 9. No starter other than Derek Fisher played at a really high level offensively. And yet they come out of here with a win because of Fisher's greatness in the fourth and also because their defense was good and they built themselves a cushion. Be part of the defense forcing turnovers. Lakers had four turnovers through the first three quarters, six of them here in the fourth quarter. And the Lakers lead the NBA Finals two games to one. Paul Pierce lets it go in, 91 to 84. And a big road victory for Los Angeles. Silence in the crowd, Kobe Bryant and his backcourt partner who played more playoff games, had more playoff wins than any starting backcourt in the history of the NBA. Yet another victory. Bryant and Fisher getting it done, especially Derek Fisher at crunch time. He's done it again. Come May and June, you can count on Derek Fisher as the Celtics walk off disappointed Ray Allen 0 for 13 from the field 0 for 8 from three point range after that magnificent record setting performance in game two. Well let's go to that backcourt. Let's done it again. Doris. Yeah quite a combination Mike. Jeff Van Gundy called the shots you made in the fourth quarter. Will shots. What would you call them. Sorry. <laughs> uh, just faith man. You know, I'm sorry I'm getting emotional, but, you know, we we work hard in this game. And uh, sometimes things don't go your way, but you just got to keep working hard, keep believing in yourself and in your team. And this is just a great win for our organization. And uh, we're not done yet. We got a big game on Thursday night. Big win, but why so emotional? You know, I, I love this game. Um, I love this team. I love this guy. I love what I do. And um, nothing means more to me than helping my team win. Well, you did that, Derek. Congratulations. Kobe, your backcourt mate, who you've always put so much faith in. You struggled out of the gates in that fourth period, 0 for 4. As you watched what he did, what was your reaction to it? Well, just, you know, Derek being Derek. I mean, he makes big plays all the time. And, uh, you know, it never ceases to amaze me. The only guy who really played at a high level for most of the night. A, a lot of guys played hard, but he was at the highest level offensively. How do you guys absorb that second half where you struggled so much and still come away with a win? Oh, yeah, we just had to be poised and um, you understand that they're going to make a run. And, uh, you know, we did that. You know, they, they made a push, but they never really got fully control of the game. We made big shots when we counted. Kobe, thank you. Yeah. Mike. All right, Doris, the Celtics are never able to regain the lead. They came back from 17 down, cut it to one, but win on the road. And back in front in this best of seven series. It continues Thursday night right back here at the TD Garden for game four. Tip off shortly after nine o'clock Eastern. Kobe Bryant, the Lakers win it 91 to 84. An emotional Derek Fisher with another superb pressure packed performance. Final score, the Lakers 91, the Celtics 84 for Mark Jackson, Jeff Van Gundy, Doris Burke, and our entire ABC crew. This is Mike Green saying so long for Boston. Again, game four Thursday night. Coverage begins at 8.30 Eastern. Now except on the West Coast, stay tuned for your local late news. Nightline and Jimmy Kimmel Live over most of these ABC stations. Thanks for watching the NBA on ABC, home of the NBA Finals.